Uh, well, welcome to happy hour, everybody. <laughs> uh, this special edition is unfortunately not live <laughs> this week. Um, I have a special guest tonight, today, tonight, uh, B. Elizabeth, all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. And we are recording this on Labor Day, you know, because we don't take days off as musicians, but we're working, if this counts as work. But uh, anyway, so we're recording this ahead of time to accommodate some travel plans and stuff. But thanks for being here. And we're super excited, and I haven't seen you in a long time, and I'm so excited to see your pretty face. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. <clears throat> we saw each other back in January. You came to visit and played some gigs and stuff mm -hmm. here in Nashville, and been in Park City. Gosh, it's been like two years since I've seen you in Park City. Yeah, it was, I, I love that the last time I saw you was in Nashville, though. That was such a good time. That was fun. Lots of friends. It just happened that this weekend, a ton of friends were in town, so it was like, the perfect weekend and I think it backed up to Folk Alliance right you were coming yeah. Folk Alliance. Yeah. Yeah, it was after Folk Alliance <laughs> and I showed up and we played some shows and and then we drank whiskey late into the night one night as you do <laughs> <laughs> anyway so uh so let's so our cocktail today is is wine <laughs> because we like to drink wine I haven't done I did sangria once on the show but I haven't done just wine yet and I think I probably drink more wine than anything so it's just it's I'm overdue so what tell me while well, I open this bottle of wine that someone left at my house the other day That's the kind of wine. <laughs> it's it's free wine it's a Cabernet Sauvignon mm, nice. um, is that what kind of wine you're drinking while I open perfect, it? perfect 1 p.m. wine <laughs> oh, yes, fall asleep. yes. Um, so this is a shameless plug Alicia was kind enough to go with my wine option this week so I have been drinking this wine called Scout and Cellar forever. It's uh, available online. It's a home delivery wine. And I started selling it, which it has been like this crazy thing of, I don't really sell it. I just get a discount on drinking it. Shh, don't <laughs> <talk to me. laughs> um, just because we've been locked down. It's COVID and um, it, it's crazy. I haven't been out to do wine tastings, but I have all these bottles. No, I'm not going to double fist two bottles of wine. And I just wanted to show you. Yeah, uh, man, it's a holiday. You know, <laughs> I've been drinking this wine. This is the only wine I've been drinking for probably a year. Um, I, like you said, we drink wine all the time and I was getting nasty headaches. I was feeling like crap. And um, there's a lot of guarantees they have with this wine, but in particular, they don't put any, it's lab tested. There's no chemicals in it. So I literally feel a difference whenever I drink this wine. So uh, it's called Scout and Cellar and maybe Alicia will give me a shout out in the comments, a link yeah. to where you can find, find it if you're interested in more, but also if you hate it, it's a full refund, so you can't beat that crap, right? I love the idea of a home delivery wine. I don't think we can get that in Utah, but... No, you got to go to Evanston. People who tune in from all over the country who can imbibe in that special, special privilege of home delivery wine. Totally. And if you live in Utah and you're up for the road trip, you can head over to Evanston. We can, you know, deliver it to any okay. FedEx locations. Yes, in Evanston. Off Evanston. the border. Not promoting illegal activity. Love you, Utah government, but... I'll go get me a cat. I just got to get creative. <laughs> if, if, if I'm to the point where I'm driving to Evanston to pick up home delivery wine, I feel like we're kind of negating. <laughs> negating the home delivery purpose. <laughs> right, right. No, that's a really good point. But uh, I'm, I'm actually going to drink one of our white wine spritzers because I'm going back to work after this. So uh, I'm going to stick with 6% instead of uh, 12. So I really wish I had a white wine spritzer right now. Cheers. Oh my gosh. I'll bring you some <clears throat> when, cause I'll see you next month. I think in park city. Yeah. We might have a sequel episode. Heck yeah. That'd be awesome. Heck yeah. Yeah. So my sister and I, we like to drink white wine spritzers at Indigo girls concerts and we <laughs> have a drinking game for the concert where if they say, thanks y'all, then we take a drink of our white wine spritzer, which is literally every single song. <laughs> I have to say, that sounds like a heavy drinking kind of night. <laughs> yeah, that's our Indigo Girls drinking game. Um, so you have an option. You can either yeah. start us off or bring us home at the end of the set. So would you like to start with a song or would you like me to start us with a song? Your choice. I'll start with a song. Yay! I'll start with a Park City song, a song I wrote whenever I was living there. <clears throat> Let me play my buddy's Eastman acoustic. It's called Plain Old Shoes. There's a hill on my way I climb every day 
wonder if they'll ever mow it down. Oh, I know that my shoes are pretty plain, but they still get me round. Yeah. Can you see that mountain on my right? One with four cell sign. I didn't think anybody on, but I'm gonna make that mountain my home. I said I'm gonna make that mountain my home. Yes, I am. There's a hill on my way. I climb every day. Wonder if they'll ever mow it down. All I know is that my shoes are pretty plain, but they still get me round. Yes, they do. Always felt connected with the water. How it always seems to be in the right place. Oh, whether it's pool from the river. Falling from the sky, you're just tears streaming down my face. I said, Oh, just tears streaming down my face. I gotta keep walking. Yes, I do. Yeah, get that shaker. Gotta keep walking. Oh, yes, I do. There's a hill on my way. I climb every day. Wonder if they'll ever gonna mow it down. Oh no, I know is that my shoes are pretty plain. Oh, but they they still give me around. Yes, they do. There's a hill on my way. I found every day. Wonder if they'll ever, ever gonna mow it down. Oh, I said, and all I know is that my shoes are pretty plain. Oh, but they still, they still get me around. Oh, yeah, but they still get me around. But they still get me. They still get me around. Yes, they do. Woo! Yee Yee That's fun, and that's a cool ass guitar. <laughs> Um, I have missed your bluesy, soulful voice. I was like, oh, mm, I remember now all the goodness. It was fun. So. Thank you. I'm excited. I always get so excited when we get to trade songs. It's like when we were um, when we we're around each other, we usually have gigs on the same nights. So oh, it's like, way <laughs> far, passing the street, you're heading there, I'm heading there kind of thing, you know? That happened to me the other night. I was leaving the spur and John Cheryl, a friend of mine from Salt Lake, he was playing prime in park city and we passed each other on the way to the parking garage. And he was like, how's your gig? How's your gig? <laughs> I'm like, so good to see you. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. What are you going to play for us? Um, I'm going to play you a blues or I guess it's a jazz song. Um, it's funny. I don't really know how to play jazz, but I looked up some fancy chords on the internet. And so now I know how to play jazz. Who yeah, needs yeah, a college know. degree? <laughs> just kidding. Jazz players are just like shaking their heads and just sobbing into their hands. Um, anyway, this song's called Sweet in the Deal. It's rather newish, but here we go. Experience. 
incentives and these kinds of events. The longer we invest, the more returns you'll see. I'm not looking for a bargain, no waiter's too steep. You can't put a price on love, baby. You got what I need. I'll make you an offer too good to be real. And if it ain't good enough, baby. You got something I want, babe, that can't be, but I'll make you an offer, too good to be real, and if it ain't good enough, babe, I'll sweeten the deal, oh, if it ain't good enough, babe, I'll sweeten the deal. That's fun. Thank you. And how you gonna sweeten the deal, baby? Oh, let me tell you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about it on the next Zoom. <laughs> yeah, it's a sequel song. <laughs> so what are you, what's, what's going on? What are you doing in these COVID times in Nashville? What's Nashville like during COVID? I don't really know. I don't get out that much. <laughs> Very peaceful where I am. I feel really lucky. I had found a new place thanks to a good friend of mine. Um, so I'm, I'm in this living situation with some other musicians and also a, a, a woman that's in nursing school to be a doula, uh, a holistic kind of baby birthing nurse of sorts. Um, and it's a really peaceful situation um, of, of musicians and creatives. We've got a music studio on the property. So um, we've been doing a lot of that and then hiking um a friend of mine sarah clanton big shout out to sarah clanton she has been going down the river with our other friend caitlin cannon from song school and they started this thing called float gang and i've been a part of that it's the best social distancing activity i bought a massive blow up golden goose raft and we just do ridiculous rafts like there's a hibiscus flower and a Vinny, who is a um, Pegasus unicorn, rainbow Pegasus unicorn, mm -hmm. and we just tie off on each other's rafts and we float the really mellow rivers around town and we just talk about all things positive and how we can support each other and love what's going on and really be there for each other. It's been more women than men, but we have a lot of men that come out too and mm -hmm. everybody's just of that mindset of like, we don't sit, we don't talk a ton about business stuff on the river we just keep it light and keep it fun and everybody probably thinks that we're insane with our rafts so it's fun <laughs> that's so fun though i love that um maybe we caitlin cannon wants to be on happy hour sometime she's a, she's a badass i love her she's amazing and her new album trash cannon is freaking killer um she, yeah, she's so awesome. And she's been out in Durango. So Sarah took a trip out there. They did a Colorado River, which is probably a little bit spunkier than our rivers <laughs> over here. It's cooler. <laughs> it's cooler as well. We're, we're working with bath water, but the downside is like the, the water moccasins. No biggie, no biggie. <laughs> Pick them. Like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. But, well, but it's nice. What about you? You're down in the valley and, and loving life and... Yeah, so I'm living in Heber. Um, I built a patio this summer. <laughs> That's what I did. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've, been, I've actually been playing a lot of music that a lot of the restaurants and bars have opened up with patio music and outdoor stuff. So that's how you Boneyard. Thanks for playing Boneyard up in Park City. Yeah, that was a fun time. Um, yeah, so I've been doing a lot of that and like uh, kind of like small private events and stuff and like corporate things and so it's just interesting because everything has, has just shifted in that, like, I had, you know, I, all the cool things that I had ex excitedly planned were canceled, but I'm getting all this work that's very short term. And so it's like, I'm booking about a month out, which isn't very, which is weird for me. I'm used to booking like four to five to six months out. And it's like, oh, just four weeks. <laughs> 
So it's it's good though, and just enjoying Hebrew life and taking it easy, trying to camp here and there, go on hikes, take my dog out and stuff like that. So I don't know. Right. Getting now. outside is is key, yeah. you know, through all this craziness. If we can't go and, and do what we used to do, what was our norm, you know, at least getting outside and enjoying. I'm improving my there. golf game and my cornhole game, but I will Anyone who has been playing those sports with me this summer is going to laugh, but it is improved. I'm not great, but it is improved. <laughs> I'm actually part of the reason that I'm coming to Utah, other than just my massive, I have a sword unit in Utah that ha it's basically my musical equipment and instrument hoarding yeah. zone is what I call it. Um, <laughs> other than to pick up a bunch of musical instruments and recording equipment, um, I'm, I'm getting my golf clubs because that's the biggest thing. Our local golf course through COVID, they shut down, but they told everybody you can walk it for free. Oh, that's sweet. That's really nice. Yeah, except I've just been walking it, like literally no clubs. <laughs> <Just walking> it. <laughs> it's a lovely stroll. <laughs> yeah. I watch my friends. I'm like, you know, I wear, I made my own visor. I like cut a baseball hat apart and, and made a visor. So I look like golf official, you know? Oh, good, 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 good. Um, all right, cool. Are you gonna what, what what song are you gonna play for us next? Yeah, Woo. I'm gonna play you a song. I started writing a couple of years ago when we were at Song School. So Alicia and I, we go to this amazing thing called Song School. Um, that didn't happen this year because of COVID, which is insane. Because it's literally, if you go to Song School, it's where you recharge. It's almost like New Year's because it's the beginning and the end of your year. You just recharge over these beautiful four days in Lyons, Colorado at the Planet Bluegrass. Um, and we had a, a song a teacher was there, Bonnie Paint from Elephant Revival. And she said, she said she does a lot of writing to the river. She'll go sit next to a body of water even, and any body of water and just see what songs come, come to her and are called. And I thought that was so cool. And this was the first song I wrote that way. And I swear every song has come to me that way since just tuning into something in nature to call the song. She's a genius. That's all I have to say. <laughs> so. words and it's thicker than blood and stronger than fear so I keep playing the strings of my heart hoping that somebody will hear playing it loud cause the fate of the world is balanced on the edge of a knife all I have is my voice to cut through the noise that's where my power lies music is the most peaceful weapon in the world Music is the most peaceful weapon in the world. Everybody wants to be heard, but no one's in a hurry to understand. So we scream and we fight with all of our might instead of letting each other in. I see hope in the sunrise and the promise of another day. Where I can stand on the front lines with my brothers and sisters united in the face of music is the most peaceful weapon in the world. Music is the most peaceful weapon in the world. Music is the most peaceful weapon in the world. Music is the most peaceful weapon. And if we change hearts, we can change minds. Change minds, we can change the world. We can change the world. Music 
music is the most peaceful weapon in the world. If we change hearts, we can change minds. Music is the most peaceful weapon in the world. If we change hearts, we can change minds. Music is the most peaceful weapon in the world. Change hearts, we can change minds. Music is the most peaceful weapon in the world. Yay! I remember that song. Um, I think I played that one in January at our show, or you remember it from song school? Yeah, because you had the big choir on the stage and everything. Such I only had the chorus back then. What? <laughs> I only had the chorus back then. We played the chorus like 47 times as a sing-along. Because I, I was going to say, like, I remember you playing that song and you had a bunch of people on stage with you and everybody was singing the chorus and stuff. And it was great to harmonize too, especially in the wildflower stage with everybody who like just can pick up three and four, five part harmonies like it's in their sleep. Um, I remember that. And it was funny because we were playing just now, I was listening to like the, the verses and I was just like, there's some really cool lines in there. And I was like, I don't remember these lines. <laughs> but that's why. Because <laughs> it was Aaron English, a uh, songwriter that I write with, he helped me finish that song. We finished the verses together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that whole thing started. It's so ironic how music can be recycled. You mm -hmm. know, we know this as musicians. So many songs that were important, you know, a few decades ago are just so important again, you know, and they continue to be as we go along, history kind of rewrites itself in a way. And um, that was Rami Assam was there that year at Song School. And he made that comment. He said, music is the most peaceful weapon in the world, trying to encourage us to use our voice as folk singers to write these songs. Mm -hmm. And um, I just said, I'm like, Rami, I, I'd love, I'd love to use that line. And he just said, Elizabeth, anything I say is is for all of us. It's for everyone. Please use that and please, please spread the word. And it's crazy how, you know, he used his voice to help try and bring peace during the revolution in Egypt. Yeah, that was and a now, story. Yeah, that was a crazy story. If you can look up Rami Assam, he's incredible. Um, but it, it's just crazy how that message, it, it, it's so relevant forever and always. It'll be a relevant message yeah you know for us as songwriters well that's really that's awesome um yeah no i loved how that song came together like i was listening to the lyrics and i'm like damn you got some lines in there those are good but um well since you did a song school inspired song i'll do a song school inspired song um this one i got from a steve seskin class and uh he, it was one of the Let's Write a Song classes where we threw out a bunch of titles and then you go off and you write stuff and then come back at the end. So I uh, wrote it, I think it was last song school last year, I want to say. And uh, it's gotten a few rewrites. I think it's finally done now. So I think uh, the goal is to make a record this winter and I think this one's probably going to go on it. So you tell me what you think about that. All right, it's called Comfort in the Chaos. to 
till I hear from you. The world is sick, defiled, and lost. You are everything this world is not. And your voice is water on the place. Your time. recorded that last song that you played no I I am going to so that's part of my shift is I was on the road I was touring full-time you know like I, I had done full-time around locally when I was living in North Carolina and then when I moved to Park City Utah I was playing what like four to five nights a week depending on the season you know the grind yeah. and then I toured with an artist I was all over Europe and the United States touring for three years and it was to the point that we were living out of suitcases going from house concert to house concert, venue to venue. And my, my body and mind and soul were just breaking down. I couldn't take it anymore. So I moved to Nashville to have a hard reset so that I could find my other gifts in music and not have to be playing out so much. So my passion is really in production. And you know me, I like weird shit and production allows me to make weird <laughs> shit. And it's awesome so it's um i'm excited to produce some of these songs on my own i've been working with uh, paper swan studio Th thomas dove is a good friend of mine we've been co-writing together and then he records the songs because he's a magician of a producer and so that's that's been really cool is to make these relationships with people who also like to produce around here it's such a such a different thing than uh, when I just felt like I never had time to record because I was playing gigs all the time and, and it was hard to find time to write and be creative. So it's been a cool shift, but it's taking a while because I'm learning from the ground up how to use logic and um, trying to find an engineer to work with. Eventually down the line, I got to put the work in on my own first, but um, hopefully I can find a teammate in that and, and a lot of these songs will be more available, uh, fully produced. So. That's Yeah, that's so cool. I mean, like that's kind of, I don't know any of that stuff and for me it's like I am really looking forward to finding like I don't know I'm I'm in the early stages I'm still in the like refining the songs process um but looking forward to the like budget and you know who I'm gonna work with and like that's gonna really that's those two things kind of go hand in hand budget and who you're working with but people were like oh if you keep your you can keep your costs down by doing it yourself and I'm like I just don't have the skill set but like this is how I'm going to learn what I 
like and what I don't like and what I, you know, all this, what, what can I possibly good at and like the production side because I have no clue. And so I'm like really looking forward to working with somebody who can show me the ropes and um, teach me a lot of stuff about that side. Because like when I, I recorded that my EP with uh, my old band, like we did it very DIY. And so I learned how to mic a guitar and I learned all these different things about takes and the process. But as far as like production and like choosing instrumentation of arrangements, like how you even like, I don't even know where to start with any of that stuff. Like I, the EP was recorded like, oh, well, I have this bass player and I have this drummer and I have this guitar player and I have this piano player. So that's my instrumentation. <laughs> and it's got to start somewhere. You know, you may not have the skill set yet, but you're amazing and you certainly have the ability to, to do that stuff. And a lot of it is like baby steps. You know, one thing that I've noticed is when I throw out my shitty, what I call shitty, it's not shitty, but I'm just joking. You shouldn't call anything you make shitty people ever, you know. <laughs> Even if it is, <laughs> but I'll, I'll throw out these, right? I'll throw out these new ideas or these fresh ideas that aren't recorded very well. And what I find is that I'm always coming across producers who are just like, "That's so cool that you're putting the work in. Let me show you how to make that better. Or, Let me show you what you can do to help." And you know, um, I'm part of this group, Logic Ladies. We're all learning how to do logic here in Nashville. It, it's been such a great support group. But I also have to give a big shout out to Jody Whitesides because he has been spending, he's the one who I'm like, nothing works. Nothing's plugging in. I don't know what to do. Are you awake? Can you talk? <laughs> that guy for me? And he's just, be real. You're working on this at like two, three. <laughs> I'm like, Jody, this is what I get for putting up with you all these years. No, I'm just kidding. I love him. <laughs> but he has been such a help to me. He's a, he is a logic pro. I mean, he's certifiably... Yeah, he knows, he knows <laughs> like yeah so is. thank you to him it takes a village for anything just like with your ep anything that we do as musicians there is a lot of behind the scenes and other people um, that we couldn't do without and what a gift that we have that community you know yeah. behind us. i find that like in these weird weird times i am finding it's i mean i'm missing things like folk alliance and song school and going on the road and like playing house shows with friends and that kind of thing but like and that certainly builds community and connection but I'm finding that like this summer this show and then I've just been reaching out to a lot of local musicians in a way that I never have before and and it's just crazy like my network and like not I don't, network seems like such a uh, like shallow term but like the community is changing for me and that's like we have to stick together because otherwise we'll all go insane <laughs> and we're not out playing and we're not doing all the things that we're so used to doing and we always are so busy we never have time for this kind of stuff and so it's like really nice actually to like slow down and actually spend time with other musicians and it's it's been really nice I think and to your point it takes a village and every single person that I've had on this show like we'll chat before or after the show starts and ends and just kind of like dump out our souls and deepest feelings of like I talked to Perry Adams about the, the whole Kickstarter process and then we talked about like just loneliness during quarantine and then I talked to someone else about like you know um we were talking about like teaching versus ganging out versus staying home and writing and how it's changed and it's just funny like everything is you know we all have all these things going on all the time and right now we can actually like decompress and process it and connect over those things anyway but yeah it takes a village we gotta stick together during all these times absolutely absolutely and I have noticed also that communication shift that friendship uh connection shift that's happened with COVID it's it's just been an amazing ride since March you know really sad and um in other ways I I don't know a single mu well I'm sure I know a single musician but to exaggerate which I'm good at sometimes all the time uh, to exaggerate I don't know a single musician who isn't grateful for this slowdown um, other than the ones who maybe are, are severely affected income wise but 
you know, the, the amount of funding that was out there at the beginning of this and probably still is, if you're hearing this, you're a musician, you haven't applied for any grant money, look at Music Cares, look at the Grammys, the Recording Academy, all these websites have links to different grants. I, I have been so grateful to receive support money from many different organizations throughout this time to help me get through. And I think a lot of musicians, it's hard to put that work in. We don't want to put our business hat on sometimes, but if you're struggling as a musician, there probably is still some COVID grant money for you out there. So go find it. <laughs> you know, I mean, people have really been stepping up to take care of the artist field. Like I feel like I've been really, really, really lucky. People have been really great, uh, generous to help keep me doing what I'm doing. Like, I can't believe that I'm a working musician right now and I'm actually working and playing what a gift. crazy. What a gift. And, and to be honest, switching to the private party format isn't so bad, is it? We always kind of prefer those anyways. Yeah, well, it's, it's just weird. Like, it's just so strange. Like I played a private event the other night that was um, a seven person dinner party. And they're just like, and one of the people there was like, I haven't heard live music in months. And she was like, it was like a really emotional experience for her. And I was just like playing Tom Petty cover. And she was like, oh my God. And I'm like, it's crazy how you can get really burnt out after a while. And right now, the way that people are engaging with music is really authentic. And it makes me feel, and they're really, really grateful. And they're really engaged and they really appreciate it. And I think awesome. in this moment where we are so limited, it's like people are really, really appreciative and it makes me feel really important, which is like so great because it makes me want to keep going and, it, and it's really holding off on the burnout and keeping me engaged. So it's, it's pretty cool. Good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you're still working and, and that those gigs are coming out. You know, it's, I know everybody's playing it by ear with the one yeah. you know, monthly booking, but they're still going to call you whenever they're booking the next month, you know, and yeah, things aren't shut down. Time. Four weeks at a time. <laughs> oh, All right. Man. Hey, I have an idea. <laughs> you <should> play a song. <laughs> okay, so we have a buddy in Park City um, named Drew. He used to come out to open mics and he told me this crazy story about how he didn't he couldn't get a date to the high school dance so his mom bought him a foosball table and wasn't really thinking that you need more than one person to play foosball so uh i made up some story that has nothing to do with that that's just about uh, making better decisions because drew and his mom probably could have made some better decisions than that. So, here we go way down south where the sun meets the sand lived a boy named drew who dreamt of being a man Asked every pretty girl to the high school dance. They all snickered and said, you ain't got a chance. Then one day, Drew met Lou. She was sweet, sassy, a fine dancer too. Lou said, yeah, let's go to the dance. And Drew choked on his heart, almost peed his pants. Drew, Drew, what you gonna do to find a pretty lady who will dance with you? Drew, Drew, what you gonna say to get out of trouble and be on your way? Yeah. Oh, well, Drew knew that Lou liked her boys rough and tough. He wanted to prove that he was good enough. So he started a fight with the 10th grade geek, threw him in a locker, drew a dick on his cheek. The principal asked, what was that about Drew? You want to show off for Lou? Well, even though this is your first offense, punishment, suspension from the high school dance. Drew, Drew, what you gonna do to find a pretty lady who can dance with you? Drew, Drew, what you gonna say to get out of trouble and be on your way? Oh, Drew. Well, now Drew saw red as he stormed out the door, worried that Lou was gonna leave him for sure. But to his surprise, she was standing right there, looking so happy, grinning ear to ear. Drew knew that Lou was the girl of his dreams. They got married at the ripe old age of 18, moved into the basement with Drew's grandma. Only problem now is finding a job. Drew, Drew, what you gonna do to find a pretty lady who will dance with you? Drew, Drew, what you gonna say to get out of trouble and be on your way? Yeah. <laughs> All right. A few years out of high school with no skill set, packing up boxes was all he could get. The 
problem came when he met his new boss, the 10th grade geek. <laughs> oh, shucks. It's you, that nerd said with an E. You're the asshole that drew a dip on my cheek. How glorious to finally get my revenge. Now grab a plunger and head to the bathroom, my friend. Drew, Drew, what you gonna do to find a pretty lady who will dance with you? Drew, Drew, what you gonna say to get out of trouble and be on your way? Oh, Drew. Well, now Drew's working overtime cleaning up poop, but at least he has his lady loot. Take this as a lesson and heed my advice. If you don't want to be Drew, then you better be nice. There's better ways to prove that you're rough and tough than beating up kids and taking their stuff. And karma's a bitch and it's watching you. So don't end up like my good buddy Drew. No, Drew, Drew, what you gonna do to find a pretty lady who can dance with you? Drew, Drew, what you gonna say to get out of trouble and be on your way? Yeah, Drew. Drew, what you gonna do? Find a pretty lady who can dance with you. Drew, Drew, what you gonna say? Keep yourself from cleaning up poop all day. Oh, Drew. <laughs> that is, I love it. Uh, the delivery, top notch. <laughs> love that song so it's so fun to play and i think it drew every time <laughs> that's hilarious it's like you know that's not the story elizabeth right <laughs> never thought that lyric would be so fun to sing <laughs> there's so many great harmony opportunities in that chorus too just like you could get a bluegrass band behind that and just like three-part harmony <laughs> The first time I played that song live, I had 125 people singing along in the audience. Like I did at the beginning, I was like, you can sing along, Drew, Drew, what you gonna do, Drew, Drew, what you gonna say? First time I've ever gone out of limb for a sing along and like throwing it out there that wasn't a cover song, you know, wasn't something that people didn't know. And it was so cool, just everybody was singing along. It was just a bunch of harmonies and it was just a blast. And it's such a silly song. It's like, why not participate? Just throw shakers into the audience. Everybody do something. Here's a kazoo. <laughs> Here's a kazoo. Play along. It would fit for this song. That would be perfect. Man. A kazoo right. over there. It's, it's Next so time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good time. I love that. Uh, what was I going to do just now? Oh, I was going to play an older, an older song. I was going to say, I could play a... I could play a I have a song about a van. I played that last week, but I could play it for, I don't know if you've heard my van life song. I feel like Maybe. Van, van song sounds familiar. I mean, we we often talk about your van because it's yeah. a amazing van. So you remember the year at song school when I showed up in my rental car because my van broke down halfway to, to song school? <laughs> yeah. I wrote a song about that. I was like, if we're in the mo mood of silly songs, then I think it's a van life song because <laughs> You were there. I I was driving to song school, and I was supposed to play that night in David Coyle. He had a show in Longmont with a bunch of people he has written songs with, and I was like on course to be there. And on my, I was passing through Rock Springs and just just lost all the guts. Like I was hitting the gas, and like nothing was happening in my 1984 Westphalia named the Big Dill, mm -hmm. and so I. In a panic, I was like, well, I have to get to song school. Like, I'm not going to, like, not go to song school. Like, it's a week of glory. Like, I can't miss it. So I, I found the nearest uh, rental car place because I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, and, like, working on a Westphalia is such, like, a weird thing. Like, you have to have, like, a special shop. You can't just take it anywhere. You have to take it to somewhere that knows those things. And so I found the Google Maps sent me to the Western Wyoming Regional Airport, which is in the middle of nowhere and I show up and it's the tiniest airport you've ever seen but there is a Hertz rental car like office on site and it is like out in the desert so I'm like if my car breaks down now I'm super screwed <laughs> and so I get there and they have like seven cars <laughs> to choose from and I'm like okay well I mean can I leave the van here while I, I go do this thing and they're like yeah. he's like literally no one comes here it's fine so <laughs> I got my rental car, 
and left the van. I put all of my camping stuff, my guitars. I was bringing guitars for their people. So this way wow. there was like packed to the like floor to ceiling with just random crap. But I like my van had my kitchen in it and all my plates and dishes. And so I had to like downsize into a cooler and I didn't have anything to cook with. And so it was just like just a mess. And I slept in my my Dodge Journey rental car for the next week. And uh, then called and upgraded my AAA to premium while I was at song school so that I could have the van towed home from Rock Springs, Rock Springs, Wyoming to Salt Lake City. <laughs> this is the life of a touring musician, my friend. <laughs> so when my friends were like, oh, why did you sell the van? I'm like, I'll tell you. I saw an Instagram post of a couple in a van driving up the west coast. They quit their jobs, put their toes in the sand, and I said to myself, hey self, let's buy a van. <laughs> Seemed like a pretty good idea at the time, so I went on Craigslist, started shopping online. I was looking at Dodges, Chevys, and such, till I laid my eyes on a green Volkswagen bus, a Westphalia. Van life, van choose the van life, van life chose me. <laughs> when I got it home I named it the Big Dill cause it looked like a pickle and it was kind of a big deal and I needed some work as you can probably guess so I cracked my knuckles and I started to wrench. Well I tightened up the linkage, put new gas tank seals, new faucet, new plumbing, rotated the wheels, replaced the fuel filter, did electrical to it. Fix a sticky gas pedal, uh, fix a broken odometer, an exhaust leak, and a new ignition coil, and a full transmission rebuild, just to name a few, and new seat covers. Man life, man life, I didn't choose the van life, van life chose me. Well, finally the time came to hit the road in my two-bed, no-bath vacation home. It's pretty popular everywhere that I went, both hipsters and hippies wanted to be my friend. And I think probably everybody wanted to buy some weed from me, but I, I never had any, so. <laughs> Until one day when I was chugging along, outside Rock Springs I knew something was wrong. That rusty old man had finally had enough, I lost all the compression dust. As they loaded up the tow truck to haul it away, I was so, so relieved that I had AAA. We drove off into the setting sun, the adventures of the big deal were done. That's awesome. And so true. It's like, <laughs> it's so funny. Oh my gosh. I hear like, if you, whenever you record that, I just hear a gang vocal. I just went, you're like, van life. I'm like, van life. <laughs> van life. Van life. Van life. And I want like a major harmony on the Toyota Camry. Yeah. And then you can do the church ending. You know the church ending? With like um, an organ. Yeah. <laughs> That, that, that's like every church ending song. Wow. Da, 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 da. Exactly. <laughs> so freaking funny. Oh my God. I love it. All right. So how much more time do you have? Um, I got time. I got 20 minutes time. Great. So let's do, did I start? I started. You started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And let's do one more round of songs because I'm sure we'll talk in between. <laughs> Songs, you got it. Then I'm gonna do masterpiece. Okay, great. I'm so excited. Is this the one with the electric guitar? No. Aww. Unless we do two more songs, then I can do the electric. Okay. Well, I mean, let's do two more songs. I want to hear two more songs of yours, to be okay, honest. Okay. So. Right. Then, then yes. Then yes. Yeah. Get me into it. <laughs>
And I need to play this. I've got to play the stronger one last so that I can, I can uh, solve it myself. <laughs> um, I've been cat sitting at a friend's house and uh, he's got a collection of fancy guitars and amplifiers. Mm. And um, I just, I wrote this song. It's going to be, I, I just recorded it last week. I'm finishing it off um, tomorrow in the studio with Thomas Dove, my buddy. And uh, it's the same three chords over and over again. So I'm like, oh, spice it up with the tape delay pedal, y'all. And if you don't know what that is, that's because you're young. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, which isn't a bad thing. No, that's not even an insult. <laughs> Get ready for an ex-boyfriend song. <laughs> Sorry. Said that in my kill you. Why are we still here? Make a couple rounds of therapy. All the broken years. It's always been about you. Now here we are again. With me doing all the talking. You're still not listening if I played your game. I'd just be a monkey on the stage. Forgetting all my needs so you can feel okay. Keep my passion pushed aside just to keep you satisfied. Not this time. It used to be your way, but it's my way. Now, nothing left to say, nothing left to work out. Taking your side isn't right for me. You hurt my face, get off your knees. Come on, let me be. said that I might kill you if we didn't break it off. Wanna drink in all the change instead of drowning in my thoughts. Need more than you can give me, but you're free to stick around. Either be my part-time lover or get up out of town if I had it my way. I'd sit back and watch you eat my cake. Choke it down and let me lick it off your face. Watch my passion come alive. Keep me feeling satisfied this time. Used to be your way, but it's my way now. Nothing left to say, nothing left to work out. Taking your side. My peace, get off your knees, come on, let me be. while you were playing about like we've been friends for 
a long time and kind of different, I don't know, we've kind of seen each other, you've seen me through Bonanza Town and like all the different phases of our musical careers. And it's just so cool, like watching you come into your own on songwriting and you have a very unique sound and a very unique style and I love that you're exploring and I just think it's cool. I don't know. It's just really cool. I'm like, we, we just, it's just a cool journey to be on with you. Growing up. Yeah. We're all growing up. <laughs> <laughs> it is very cool because, you know, I met you, it was just a few years since you had even started playing guitar mm -hmm. and you like, we are similar in that we both kind of got our start being thrown into a band. Yes, 100%. Like, <laughs> whenever we both started music, that, that was really what it was for us. It was like, oh, I want to play music. And then within a very short period of time, it was like, oh, I'm playing in a band yeah, with that people that, that, that have way more experience than me, but it's awesome because I can learn. Um, and then you hit a point with that and you got to move on to new things and then we just keep evolving from there you know yeah it was like education through a fire hose of like how to play in a band and music works and writing and all the stuff and then and then one day it was like wait I can do what I want and I can do it my way and I can come up with my own style and then it was like evolution spiraling out of control from there but yeah it's such a gift and I just I really love you know, my biggest thing, like I try to do weird, different stuff all the time. So if I'm in a writing room with somebody writing for my stuff and their feedback is, I really don't think we can say that, or I really don't think we can do that. Yeah, and the answer it. is a hundred percent validated. We are absolutely doing that right now. I love it when you tell me I can't let me show you how I can, you know? I think that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. All right, I'm gonna play you a song that I don't know if I don't know if you've heard this yet because I don't think this was I think I wrote this in the spring so it was after uh, I was there and in, in the in winter whenever what, what day is it what year I is know. It? I think I think it's September now <laughs> the day someone said to me I was like what day is it they're like isn't tomorrow Christmas and I was like <laughs> the only reason I know is just know me. who knows. <laughs> Anyway. Every day is Christmas with my Amazon delivery schedule, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Just space everything out. You get a toothbrush on Monday and you get anyway. All right. The song is called These Four Walls. And this is a this is kind of a it's not really a breakup song, it's the song you write after the breakup song. How's that? It's the song for me that I wrote after the breakup song got written. So Love it. These four walls, always the same to me. Stark, white, cold as ice and empty. The dust in the corners, cobwebs in the east. Just long-term storage of who I used to be. Open the doors, let the light in.
don't think I had heard that one. I love that. Yeah, thank you. Is that going to be on the next one too? I think, yeah, that's one of my favorite songs right now. So I feel like that's uh, kicked right up to the top of ones to record. Totes, I'm with you. Yeah, you should definitely do that one. Thanks. I, I think I will. Good. <laughs> good. I'm glad we talked good. about it. It's good. <laughs> it's good job. <laughs> I still oh. forget that people are going to watch this. <laughs> it's okay. I didn't. <laughs> you, look great. you sound great. Mm. This is fun. I mean, this is what I like watching on, on Zoom these days is people that are just hanging. And it's more fun when people know each other. I mean, it's fun too when I've been watching a ton of Mary Gaucher and Jamie's mm. um, podcast. They had Rodney Crowell on the other day. I'm like, ah, I love Mary Gaucher. <laughs> Uh, and it's just fun it's just people hanging out and it's so real you know you don't get much realer than that human being right there so yeah. um, but it's fun this is fun thanks and, oh yeah and I think we should take a second to say thanks everybody that's watching this yeah Thursday and beyond you know Alicia's gonna be at a car race somewhere and yeah I'm driving race cars tomorrow according to the time when this goes out I'm gonna have to drive a race car if, that's car, awesome. if the race car starts is the thing <laughs> You have this thing with cars starting. <laughs> it's hereditary. I get it from my dad. <laughs> um, okay, so tell me and the strangers on the internet, like if you had to talk about like what you're working on, where to find you, what you want to promote. This is the shameless self promotion corner of Alicia Stockman's happy hour. For shiz. For shiz. Yeah. Okay. So anything that we're talking about, I'll put it in the description so people can follow you, but let's tell, tell people what's up. For sure. So, um, if you want to find me, my, I'm really just, I hang out mostly on Instagram. My Instagram story is freaking hilarious. If you don't mind a little bit of perversion all the time. <laughs> um, I am single and, and, and searching for that lovely someone in my life. Um, and I do it through um, comedic sass and uh, inappropriate things that I text my mother and then put in my Instagram story. So anyways, um, <laughs> it's, a, it, it's been a fun journey over there on the Instagrams. And you can find me at Elizabeth B. That's Elizabeth with a Z and then B like a bubble B. B-E-E. -E. Um, Elizabeth B on Facebook and Instagram is the best place to find me. And then if you're a wino like me and you want to start that conversation, you can find me over at scout and seller.com backslash Elizabeth B. I like to keep it all together. The Elizabeth and the bees. But uh, yeah, so that's the best place to find me, but reach out, start a conversation. I love chatting with people. I love getting to know new people, new fans. I'm an Alicia Stockman fan. You're an Alicia Stockman fan. You know, we have shit in common already. <laughs> so. Awesome. Is it because Harza is so hard for people to spell? Yeah, you know, that, yeah, I guess. I'll change it again. I have another name change coming up, but don't worry. If you have me at Elizabeth B right now, is you'll be able to follow that. It? Is it good? Yeah, you know, I, well, that's the thing, right? I have, how many different names do I go by? People call me White Chocolate. They call me B. They call me Elizabeth. Lizard, Liz, Lesbian. I've gotten that before. The street. I'm not sure where that came from. Probably some high schooler that I went to school with um, because people love being terrible in high school to each other. Uh, so, I want but, you to know that Felicia Rockman is still going strong. <laughs> like, it's like Alicia's alter ego is Felicia Rockman. Um, we have this friend named Chad who we started that. Yeah. <laughs> We called him Dirty Chad because he would just dress like Hardy, like that country artist Hardy before Hardy was a thing. And this guy's super shy and he wouldn't get on stage. But like the only way he would is like with this persona where he's smoking cigarettes and he, Dirty Chad. I don't, I don't know. That's the name. Dirty Chad and Felicia Rockman were born that, that year at song school. <laughs> oh, that was the first song school. Good time. Oh, the memories. Anyway. Well, cool. We'll, we'll bring us home with a badass tune. Yeah. And do another one I co-wrote with Aaron English and also um, Warren Atwell, who's one of my favorite songwriters from Ireland. Um, and I co-wrote it with my dog, Keys, that passed away. She technically was a co-writer on this song. Couldn't have done it without her. <laughs> 
But we were just thinking, we just wanted to write a song, again, illustrating how much better the friggin' world is when we're all different. Uh, the world would be pretty boring if we were the same, y'all. I mean, it might be more comfortable for some people, but all in all, there's a lot of beauty in our differences. And even people we think we're very similar to, there, there's a lot of difference there. And that's what makes the world so special, at least in my opinion. So this is a song that we wrote about. Everybody's painting a picture of every decision they make. Your life is a thing of such beauty, but all you notice are regrets and mistakes. You're a canvas full of colors bleeding into one another, yet you see yourself in monochrome. Just step back and let it hit you. You can see the bigger picture. All the details come together on their own. You're already so much more than you can see. You're a poem, you're a rhythm, you're a melody. You're the answer to eternal mystery. You're a prophet, you're a dreamer, you're a visionary. When life has pulled you under, you're silenced by the thunder, you dance beneath the pouring rain. And when living makes it hard for you to breathe, just remember every moment, you're a masterpiece. Everybody's searching for something, doesn't mean anyone's lost. Can't you see that everyone's hurting? It's a feeling shared by all of us. Like a canvas full of colors leading into one another to remind us that we're not alone. Just step back and let it hit you. You can see the bigger picture. Know that you don't have to make it on your own. We're already so much more than we can see. We are poems, we are rhythms, we are melodies. We're the answer to eternal mystery. We are prophets, we are dreamers, we are visionaries. When life has pulled us under, we're silenced by the thunder. We dance beneath the pouring rain. And when living makes it hard for us to breathe, we'll remember every moment. We're a masterpiece. We're all pictures in the gallery, hanging just like stars in the galaxy. And we shine into infinity. You're already so much more than you can see. You're a poem, you're a rhythm, you're a melody. You're the answer to eternal mysteries. You're a prophet, you're a dreamer, you're a visionary. When life has pulled you under your silence by the thunder, you dance beneath the pouring rain. And when living makes it hard for you to breathe, just remember every moment, you're a masterpiece. You're a masterpiece. You're a masterpiece. Oh, you're a masterpiece. Oh, so good. Cheers to that. I had that. This was me showing you my goosebumps that I had. <laughs> Thank you. I just um, love us. I'm so grateful for that song again. I mean, that's so much a part of my everyday is reminding myself as much as the others that I come in contact that we are all a masterpiece. We're made exactly the way we were supposed to be made and we're here for a reason and we can try our best to embrace it. Um, everybody, it's just, we're human beings and human connection is the most important thing in my life. And if there could be more conversations and less fighting and more under a lot of fighting comes from some inherent some pain something that 
you know, people don't even realize is there sometimes, but we are all amazing the way we are. We just need to learn how to communicate a little better. <laughs> that, was, that was a really good song, super inspiring. I was like, I was like, I was like, she's singing it to me. It's <laughs> I, yeah, I was. <laughs> and I'm all inspired and how all the feels. Um, interesting. Do you listen to Sinclair ever? You know, I only listen to Sinclair because of Steve, Steve Seskin. And yeah. then I met her. We actually threw axes together um, <laughs> once. And I listened to her stuff again. And gosh, she just, she's so talented. And she friggin' wails. But she it. reminds me of you. Like, I mean, other than that, she's like an incredible flamenco classic guitar player. That's something that you're, you are not. But you I know, am not. <laughs> I'll have things we can improve upon, but that's like, but she, her approach to like, she's a, she's a singer songwriter, but she's also like the way her, her genre is like genre bending. And I feel like that's what you do too in the writing. Like you're playing acoustic guitar, but at the same time, like the, when you play, I hear fully produced songs and her production style, she does a lot of it herself. And, um, it just makes me think of like, I don't know. With something like that, like I can totally see a Sinclair song happening in that way. You know what I mean? But in a really cool way. I'm like, and I don't want to be like, oh, you should go listen to her and like get I like you should get ideas. But like, of course, take that and then do it your way because I know that you'll come up with something really cool and unique. But like, I I hear that in the way that you play songs is like this. When you're playing a song like that, it's not. It is simple and amazing the way that it is, but I'm like, I hear a bigger picture. There's something bigger happening. And I know that you're hearing that too. Like, this is just the, this is the blueprint, but something bigger is behind all of it. You know what I mean? Thank you. Yeah. I, and that's why this production thing, you know, is I can hear that too. I hear something more every time I'm playing a song and I'm so excited to be able to create that and songs like masterpiece i i want to do that song a lot of different ways it's just take the lyrics and put it to a different style you know it you know i have a lot of kids i i've been teaching music lessons for the gary sinise foundation the snowball express kids kids who have lost a parent in the military mm -hmm. um, i've been doing lessons with them a six-week program through covid and some of them are just they're amazing singers i'm like gosh i would just love to hear you sing this because especially with teenagers and kids you know we all know this if you know a teenager or a kid or you were a teenager or a kid sometimes it's really hard to have confidence and especially this day and age knowing that we're masterpieces believing that we're masterpieces when there's so much around us to tell us that we're just not that great yeah. um, you know and and other people have other experiences too i'm not saying everybody feels that way but i experienced that growing up and i definitely come in contact with a lot of a lot of young people who um, really just need to hear that they are good enough the way that they are. Yeah, um, well, I would love to cover that song. So send send it to me. Send me the lyrics and stuff, and I would that'd be a super cool song to do. I would love that. Um, yeah, no, that is, I I can't follow that. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. Amazing. <laughs> You're freaking master base. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think that's a really good high note because the other thing I was thinking is like, well, I was gonna ask you what song you want to hear, but also I kind of feel like I know I don't know what I don't know what you would pick of songs of mine that you the know. Nickelback song. <laughs> that's what I thought you might say, which I need to practice. So maybe when you come in October, October. yeah, I'm ready for you, but. I think, I think let's leave this on this like really high positive note. I don't have anything to follow. Like well, I'm going to go, I'm going to go turn on Alicia Stockman's Spotify channel in the background while I work for the next five hours then. <laughs> Great. I love it. Um, but thank you so much. This has been, it's been really, really awesome to see you. And thank you for sharing your beautiful songs and beautiful self with us. And thanks everybody who's tuning in. And I'm sorry that it's not live, but we really, really appreciate you for being here and go follow uh, B's stuff. I have links to her stuff in the description. And yeah, we're going to have a sequel episode. So, you know, yeah. be ready Next for you in person. I know. It's going to be awesome. Where are we going to do it? We got it. I don't know. Oh, yeah, we'll do something. Oh, mountain top. <laughs> Let's go to the top of a mountain and <laughs> see if we can get through one song at 14,000 feet. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. We'll hike to the top of Timpanogos and and then pass out. <laughs> yeah, pass a nine hours attempt just to do this live stream. We'll be dead for 